Flatwoods is one of the first locations you stop by on your quest to launch the nukes in Fallout 76. This ramshackle town was once bustling with activity. Survivors of the Great War accumulated in masses after the devastating destruction of Charlestown took away their safe haven. Responders and the ones they were protecting migrated to this small town in search of some peace from all the devastating inhabitants of West Virginia. This was only half of the responder population as the rest of them were stationed at their main force farther to the north at Morgantown Airport. Unfortunately, no location is safe from the scorch plaguing Appalachia. Eventually, all came crashing down and the responders, looking for a new life in the quiet town of Flatwoods, met their untimely end. Although this town has definitely seen better days, it is far from a ghost town. There are many amenities around the area that make this location an amazing resupply area everything from weapons armor and chemistry workstations there is also a red rocket truck stop that has a personal stash to drop off any unwanted loot many unattended brahmin wander aimlessly since the responders died this makes flatwoods an amazing place to gather food supplies an abundance of mutt fruit potatoes and silt beans help as well the secret that makes us such a fantastic location is the supply of suit flowers and blood leaf mixed together with some boiled water and you have some healing salve. This is an amazing alternative to stim packs, which can be hard to come by early on. Flatwoods as a whole is an interesting location. On the one hand, you have such an abundance of food, healing, supplies, but when you first discover it, all the humans are gone. Thanks to one of the responders, the echoes of this town are not forgotten. Dumbbell bicep curls, tricep extensions, hmm. and back extensions, yeah. Little peeve about the lack of proper equipment. No bother, chin up. Only eight more luxury coffins to make quota in backwoods. I mean, flatwoods. <laughs> Be difficult, given the uh, financial situation around here. Just need to remind them of our friends, the Chinese. Ah, I'll be back on the plane to Ipswich within a fortnight. <sighs> Gather it'll be the bench press today. Yeah, again. Welcome back, dear listeners. It's time once again to put aside all you think you know, all you believe to be true. Time to open your mind to the strange, bizarre, and sometimes terrifying world that exists in the shadows and fringes of our own, where myth, legend, and rumor are made real. Yes, it's time for more thrilling Tales from the West Virginia Hills. Tonight's episode, Who Goes There? The Strange Encounter in Flatwoods is brought to you by Sugar Bomb, the breakfast cereal with explosive great taste and 100% of the recommended daily allowance of sugar. Get your morning started right with Sugar Bomb. Our tale begins on a fateful night when a young pioneer scout, Fred Fisher, finds himself in quite the predicament, having taken a spill and fallen a dark place. Where am I? Jack? Bip? Mr. Bailey? Can anybody hear me? I can hear you. Who's there? I, I can't see you. Me? My name's Sally. What's yours? Fred. Are you okay, Fred? I think so. My head's a little woozy. Must have hit it when I fell. Oh, no. Did you get lost, too? Well, sort of. What I mean is that I was camping with my scout troop by the lake near Flatwoods. There were these lights kind of dancing in the sky. Neat. I guess. Anyway, we heard some weird noises, and the guy's double dog dared me to go look. So I did. All by yourself? You're really brave. Shucks. Thanks. I followed the noises to 
with entrance of an old mine. It smelled awful there, like rotten eggs, but worse. Suddenly, there was this bright light shining down on me. I was super scared and ran to the mine to hide, but everything felt strange. Like, my feet weren't even touching the ground. Everything went black, and I woke up here in the dark. That'll happen to me, too. We'll just do what my dad says. When you stray to lost your foot, do it best and stay put. They said they'd bring some soon. There are other people here? A very good question indeed. Tune in next time to find out the answer in the chilling conclusion of Who Goes There? The Strange Encounter in Flatwoods. about my life since the war to help educate future children someday. I think that's nice. I thought I'd just watch my programs and entertain the grandkids in my retirement. But that didn't turn out to be the case. I'm just glad they all made it to the vault in time, you see. When I saw it in a dream, I I knew my prayers were answered. My husband Frank used to work in the mines. Just a bit before the war, there was news of tremors. And he, he didn't come home. I don't know what happened to him or why he never came home for sure. And between you and me, I'm fine with that. Since the war, I've just read my old newspapers and listen to music. It's very peaceful for once, which is just right nice by me. You ever hear of the Watoga Times Atomic Lottery? The winner got 10 years worth of Blamco mac and cheese, and Salisbury steak, and, and Nuka-Cola, of course. I played that lottery for 20 years, and I finally won the month before the war. It lasted only eight years, though. <laughs> but who can you complain to? By the time it ran out, I had heard the responders' radio broadcast, so I went out to find them and get supplies. Bless their hearts. Well, I'm going home now. For a bit, anyways. <laughs> How do I turn this thing off? Blast these things. <laughs> Not this button. Not this one. Oh, <laughs> oh, here it is. Person in the distant future. Uh, Dasa told us these tapes would be used as historical records someday. <laughs> Pretty nifty. So, my name is Miguel Caldera. Let's see, uh, my story begins in an office. I used to be a programmer at Vault Tech. One of many. No, nobody special, you see. And, you know, and, and that's okay. I used to stare out that window by the coffee machine and think, ah, shucks, 
I wish I could leave this job and hike in the woods every day. <laughs> I dream about walking the Appalachian Trail, setting up camp wherever I liked, and traveling with close friends. Ah, uh, dreams kept me going. bombs fell. I was terrified. Just like anybody else. I wasn't in a vault. So, I just, you know, I had to figure it all out too. The responders found me. I had a little campsite, some supplies. I hacked the Protectron to guard me while I slept, but I miss people. I did. It's been alright, you know? Apocalypse and all. I know that seems weird, but I have freedom now. I can actually help people. I even met somebody. A volunteer who delivers supplies. <laughs> Imagine that, right? Even when you think everything is over, it's... It's not. It goes on. I mean, it's awful to... Don't get me wrong. All the people dead and hurt. But those are things beyond my control. So, you know, I, I'm making the best of it. These days, I'm important. People treat me like I matter because, well, there's so few of us. That, you know, we can't afford to think otherwise. So for all you future people, just know that we lived through something horrible, but we did it. Somehow, we're alive. And if you're hearing this, then, well, I guess at least some of us made it, right? So hey, chin up, kiddo. It'll be okay. Okay? call it the Great War now. It's not been long, and things have been rough. Welcome to Survivor Stories. I'm Dasa ben Ami, a responder. I've been working with the responders for a couple years now. I'm from Charleston originally, so it was easy to join up. What wasn't easy was the work. Rebuilding Appalachia from the rubble while survivors flock to us regularly from all over. So many have come and gone, their stories untold, their names lost to time. I thought we should preserve this history somehow. I've decided to ask people to record their thoughts, their stories, anything they want to preserve forever. I'll call this series the Survivor Stories. I'll start with me. I was an anthropology PhD student at Vault Tech University, final year. I was printing my thesis when I heard the sirens. I thought for sure my father, a Vault-Tec employee, could take us all with him. But 
Only two reservations came through. I refused to go. With my little brother, he went to the vault. They could not persuade me, though they tried. In the end, I pushed them inside it, and that was it. After that, I, I went back home to Charleston and, well, survived. Eventually, the responders formed, and I, I signed up right away. Relocating to Morgantown Airport and now Flatwoods has been... I, I remain optimistic. Been with them now for, uh, well, I guess two years. We have big plans. We can do so much to help. Maybe, just maybe, we can rebuild enough to be okay. And in the meantime, I will continue to record stories of survivors when I can. We are your history. This is Dasa Ben Ami, signing off for now. Hi. Dasa asked me if I would talk about um, how I got here. She asked everybody, so I, I said okay. My, name, my name's Colonel. And I'm 13 years old. I, I just wanted to say I'm sorry. I'm sorry for everything. Um, the bombs and the messed up people and the cows with two heads, all of it. I was bad. Just bad. I, I cheated on my spelling test. I, I, I chipped Wilkins in the shins until he cried. I pushed Rosie McCloy down the stairs. Um, I, I cut holes in the bottom of all the gym shorts and put glue in the mashed potatoes in the cafeteria. I told Harold Newell to eat 10 dead flies a day in order to grow muscles and uh, put new Coca-Cola in the rat cage water bottles at the pet store. And um, I just wanted to say I'm sorry about everything. Because my dad said if I wasn't this way, the bad things wouldn't happen. I, I haven't seen daddy since moms and I, I guess he left because of that, too. It's okay. I'm, I'm trying to be good now, though. I'm, I'm not old enough to be a volunteer, but Dasa said I could help collect food and water, so I'm getting better, I promise. And, oh, Daddy, if you're listening, I promise it won't be bad anymore, so you can come back now, okay?
myself. The responders are good people. They're trying their damn best, for sure. Things aren't good, and stuff is getting worse. Anyway, this is a reminder to myself, a reminder that this gun is my insurance. Things get real bad if the food runs out or the water runs dry. I get to decide how I leave this goddamn world. I'm not gonna let myself suffer. I'm not gonna die hungry and alone. Nothing all day with me but listen to the radio and drink. I should have got out sooner when Billy and his buddies started torturing little cats and dogs. His friends were no good, but that didn't stop me anyway. I can't believe my wake up call was watching people's heads get stuck on spikes. So, what is an old gal like me to do? Steal all the food, steal all the camps, and get the hell out of there. <laughs> I'd trade my last bite of food just to see the look on their faces. Oh, I know it's gonna piss off Billy's friends, but I don't give a damn. I told myself I should feel sorry for the little town across the river. But if I'm being honest, then that's what this tape is for. I don't really care. I call myself an addict, but, um, uh, it ain't the Kins that finally got me. It was always Billy. chapter of Who Goes There? The Strange Encounter in Flatwoods. In the last episode, pioneer scout Fred Fisher met a curious girl named Sally while hiding in the dark. But as it turned out, they weren't alone. There are other people here? Yeah, they probably just went to get more food. They'll be back soon enough. You can wait with me, and they'll give you food too. You just have to do what they want. What do you mean? When they want to play games with you. Games? What kind of games? I'm still learning the rules. Mostly, they're kind of boring and only hurt when they use the needles. Needles? Yeah, you know, like at the doctor. This doesn't sound like any game I know. It sounds downright awful and these people sound really bad. We have to get out of here. No, no, stay put, stay put, stay put, stay put. Okay, okay, stop screaming. Dolly, what's 
wandering by the river outside Flatwoods. He was disoriented, but unharmed, save for two small wounds on each temple. To this day, Fred is convinced his strange encounter was real, and even continues to search high and low for a missing girl named Sally, whom he swears he met. So I leave it to you to decide, dear listeners. Was this simply the wild imagination of a frightened boy lost in the woods? Or was Fred Fisher, in fact, abducted by brainwashing aliens from outer space? Be sure to tune in next week for another thrilling chapter of Tales from the West Virginia Hills. Reverend Delbert Winters here, born and raised in this very town. Met my own church to the responders for their outpost here, and uh, you're welcome. The responders are on a true mission, you see, helping folks through thick and thin until the heavens open up again and take us all up anyways. When this all happened, I figured like most it was time. This was the end, but, but it wasn't, was it? We're still here. At first, I thought it was a mistake that we was missed, forgotten. Maybe we did some wrong. Didn't give enough to charity, maybe. Didn't praise his name, even in the worst of times. Maybe thought some things that ought not to been thought. So I asked him. I asked how? Why? I fought your wars on Earth. I'm ready to fight them up there by your side. Then, in my despair, I saw some survivors eating raw rat carcass behind a dumpster. You ought to cook that first, I warned them. It seemed obvious. We tried but got sick, they said, covered in their own filth. I realized right then and there that I was being tasked. From then on, I built kitchens, cooked good food, fed anyone who walked up with an empty belly. And I was thankful for my task in life. Thankful. <laughs> Next time hell or high water land in my stoop, I'll be swept clear away with it. But till then, let's share a home-cooked meal together, all right? I want to thank you guys for checking out this video. This one is especially long because, hey, this one is Flatwoods. There's a bunch of holotapes and terminals in there for me to go through. So don't expect every single episode to be this long. But anyways, please be sure to like, subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next video.